Hey everyone, what's up and welcome back. Now, if I had to guess, you're probably here because you wanna know how to win a laptop and a bunch of other cool stuff too. And I'm gonna get to it. I wanna tell you everything, I wanna get through it quickly and I wanna jump right in because there's a lot to talk about and you probably have a lot of questions. So let's just go with it. Now, the contest is not something that I'm putting on. It is actually the NVIDIA Studio Project Soul contest. So as you'd probably guess, this video is sponsored by NVIDIA. It's not the first time I've worked with them. And if you missed my last video I did with them, I talk about the GeForce RTX graphics cards and all the cool stuff I can do with it, including making this giant space laser cannon to kill cockroaches. Link in the card in the description below. But today's video is even more exciting because they are running a contest. Two quick pieces there I wanna break apart. NVIDIA Studio, Project Soul. NVIDIA Studio is basically the initiative of NVIDIA making stuff for those of us who create content. That's part A. Part B is Project Soul. Project Soul is a series of videos that NVIDIA has been creating to show off the ray tracing capabilities of their graphics cards. Now what you're seeing are not rendered frames out of a software package and then put together in a video. These are real time rendering results coming from a game engine. If you're not super familiar with that, just think of how a video game has to constantly update as you move the character around and render stuff in real time versus a movie they render each frame individually and then stick it together for the final film. Anyways, they're making really cool stuff with their technology and that's what this is all about. These videos they've been putting out have these characters, these people in these exosuits. So starting today, you can download the Project Soul characters. There's a male and a female variant and they're made to be used with Unreal Engine. Now, if you have not used Unreal Engine, if you've never used a game engine, don't sweat. I'm gonna show you some stuff later in the video, but I wanna give you some good news. Whether or not you have messed with Unreal Engine, game engines, any of this stuff in the past, doesn't matter. All you need to be able to do is to run Unreal Engine on your computer, even if it's for the first time ever. You don't need to have ray tracing turned on. You don't need to have an RTX card. You don't even need to have an NVIDIA graphics card. They don't care. They just wanna give you cool stuff so you can make even cooler stuff with it. So let's talk prizes, details, and then I'm gonna give you a tour of the assets they're providing. And I'm gonna show you how to mess with them, how to customize them, how to work with them and do a little bit of stuff so that you can get a head start on creating your entry for this contest. So. What can you win from the contest, you're probably wondering. Well, I'll tell you. The first place winner gets an RTX Studio laptop and a bunch of Marketplace credit for the Unreal Engine asset store. Second place also gets the Marketplace credit with an RTX Titan graphics card. And third place gets an RTX 2080 Ti plus the Marketplace credit as well. So starting today, you have until September 30th to submit your entry, and then I think they choose the winners on October 15th, and they'll announce it then. Now to enter the contest, it's actually very simple. All you have to do is create an image or a video. It can be either one, and submit it to them on social media. So on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, what you're going to want to do is tag at NVIDIA Creators and hashtag it with Soul Remix. This is the way to make sure they actually see it. And a fun bonus thing, if you submit something, be sure to also share it on my Discord under the Project Soul channel. If you're part of my community, we're gonna do a fun thing where I review and showcase all of your guys' great work and we'll do it over on Twitch. Now what it is you'll be creating is either a still image or an animated something involving the Project Soul models that they've provided. What that is is up to you. Be original, be creative, and just do something that wows them. Do something that is just cool. Make something awesome. Or get weird with it, I don't know, just go for it. Now for those of you super familiar with Unreal Engine, you could probably go download the stuff and jump in now and get going. Or you could stick around and you know hang out with me, that's good too. But for those of you who haven't yet really messed with Unreal all that much, I wanna give you kind of a walkthrough. I wanna give you the full tour of what they've provided, what the software is like, and how you can customize the assets to make them your own, how to pose them, how to add some animation, how to add some cool effects, and so on. So we're gonna do all of that now. So get ready for your, your mini crash course in Unreal Engine. For those of you doing this for the first time, you're gonna to wanna to install the Epic Games launcher, and through there is how you find the Unreal Engine, you install there, you launch through there as well. You'll be opening the Soul Characters 2019 U project for this. And once you have, this is what you'll see. Now, if you are a Maya or a Blender person and this is all new to you, it works very similarly. It's actually very close to Cinema 4D as well. The middle area is your 3D viewer. Down to the bottom is your content browser and that's where all the assets are stored and that's where you can drop them in. And it's kind of like your outliner, but not everything in here is necessarily in your scene. You just have access to put it into your project. I also recommend hitting this little list icon so that you can more easily browse the folders. On the left, you have a whole bunch of tools, things you can add into the scene that are not assets, but they're things that are just built into the tool. Um, we're not gonna worry too much about this at the moment. Over on the right is details. When you select something, this is your attribute editor. And the top right corner is kind of like your layer panel. It's just what's, that's, that's a better way to say, this is your organizer, your outliner. This is the thing that shows what's actually in the scene. So what you wanna do is double click on the character folder because that's where everything has been stored for us. And you have a male and a female version of the soul character. We'll start off with the guy, double click in there and you have the asset 
the physics asset, and the skeleton. These three components all make up one asset, and you can work with them in different ways, but what we're gonna do is just drop in Soul Mark II. Now to move around, it is kind of the same as in Maya, so it's not all that different. However, there is a cool way, since this is a game engine, you can move around as if it's a game. If you hold down the right mouse button and use the WASD keys to move around like you would in a game, you will navigate the space as if it were a video game. If the camera's moving way too fast for you, because I'm not a huge fan of how fast we're flying around, you just come to the top right corner to camera speed and drop this down to two or three. If you need to move up with the mouse button held, you can hit E, or if you need to move down, Q. Now your quality settings might look a little bit different on your end than they do on mine. I'm actually using the RTX ray tracing stuff, so if mine looks a little bit shinier or more reflective than yours, it's not an issue. It just happens to be the different hardware settings. Now to adjust the character, let's say that you want to use this rig, but you want to customize his armor. Maybe you want to make him look more weathered, distressed, you know, more destroyed, rusted or something. What you can do is double click on the asset down at the bottom. It's going to open a new window where we're kind of editing this specific asset. Now in the top right corner, you have skeleton mesh, and physics. And these are different ways to adjust different properties. You might even see animation with some assets that you double click. This is where you would change animation attributes if there were any as well. So for example, if you go to physics and you hit the simulate button, it will actually just ragdoll him and he'll fall to the ground and you get to see some of that Fus Roda action. Beautiful. The next thing I'll point out is skeleton. I'm not gonna get into this, but I just wanna point it out. If you are planning on like animating this character, like oh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna do all this animation, let me stop you there and just give you a quick heads up. Normally, you don't work with this type of a file to do character animation. You would work with the actual Maya file or Blender file or an OBJ or something like that, and you would animate it elsewhere and bring in the animation data and attach it to this character inside of Unreal Engine. Now, you can do some animation in Unreal, but if you are like a Maya animator, there's a learning curve and it might just be easier to use some pre-created animation. Most of us don't just have a bunch of motion capture libraries sitting around to just apply. So if you are going to browse the Unreal Marketplace, which is something that I did, you can go to the free section and you'll find a bunch of stuff. One of the things that's in here is this MCO mocap basics. And this is just a, a pack of animation that you can apply to characters. Now, if you're going to apply any animation, you're going to have to do some stuff with the skeleton. Basically, it's going to come in on a different rig, some kind of you know basic humanoid rig with that animation. And what you're gonna wanna do is tell Unreal Engine like, hey, take that animation and put it on this character, this Project Soul person we have here. So you'll need to come in here to Skeleton, you'll have to go to the Retarget Manager, and you'll have to basically select a humanoid rig and connect where it says like, oh, the root, what's that going to be? And you would tell it, oh, well, it's the root joint. And you would go through and basically reconnect all these pieces. There's other tutorials online, I'm not gonna dive into it, but you'll have to do some of that. You may also have to modify the pose and put them into a T position. You gotta make sure he matches, it's a bunch of stuff. I learned it from a couple of tutorials in about a day, so you can do the same, don't worry too much. You can totally do it, I believe in you. And remember that you don't have to do any of that. Like if you don't wanna animate it, you just wanna do an image, that's totally fine. You can submit a still image. A lot of people are probably going to do that because this is extra work but that extra work may also be a creative choice. So it's totally up to you. You can get really creative either way you go. So I'm just giving you options and giving you ideas. Now, if you want to customize the mesh, this is something I do recommend because this is not quite as complicated. If you wanna change the textures of this object, go to the mesh tab in the top right corner. Now, by the way, this is how you compose the characters. You can go to skeleton or mesh and you can click on whatever part of the character you want you'll see the uh, the joint and the name of that joint highlight. So this is the left clavicle joint. I actually didn't mean to click that. So you can basically pose out the character just like you would in any other. There's lots of interesting things to grab, so uh, careful what you end up with if it's not quite what you anticipated, but yeah. But if you are having a hard time grabbing what you want, it might be easier to go to skeleton and be in the skeleton tree because then you can actually see kind of an organized outliner of the different joints. So for example, you can make sure you grab the left index finger, and it's a little bit easier to grab the joint that you need if you can just do it through the hierarchy than trying to eyeball it. Highly recommended. And by the way, if your computer is slower and is having a hard time keeping up with stuff, maybe you might want to switch this lighting mode up here from lit. You can change it to unlit, which will take out a lot of the work of the graphics to have to light things. Or you can just go wireframe if you really need to just pose and not see anything. Or you can just hit reflections and really see what that ray trace goodness is up to. Anyways, I got sidetracked. Back to mesh to customize the character. Let's say we want to make this a little bit more colorful. In fact, let's do it to the other rig because I've been showing you the guy model. Let's take a look at the girl model. I close that little window and I come back up here. I could use these this button to say content, or I could go through the sub menu here. Either way, going into Soul 3 Female, these are very high resolution textures, which is fantastic. So you can actually do a whole lot 
in a close up. So let's double click on her. But what happens if we wanna make her more colorful, for example? As long as you're in the mesh view, over here on the left, you have all these material slots and you can highlight different areas to see if that's what you want or just isolate and be like, okay, we wanna customize the torso. Now you can double click and it will open up the texture editor. Now, don't let this freak you out. I know a lot of animation people don't usually touch these types of things. So if you're like, oh, textures, node graphs, don't wanna do it. Don't worry, you don't have to do much with this. If you know what you're doing, go have a field day and just go crazy. But if you don't know what you're doing, it's okay. Don't panic, I'll show you what you need. Now in this specific case, I'm not seeing what I'm looking for. So now what we're looking for is a texture sample that feeds into a base color node. Now what I selected first doesn't have this. So when you're like, oh, like I don't see what we're looking for. You can double click on some of these to explore. I'm gonna double click on torso underscore MF. When I double click, it opens this up and this brings us to where we wanna be. So you may have to just click a few things, but don't panic. You have all the tabs up at the top that will lead you back to where you were. You're looking for something to feed into color. That's probably what we wanna be messing with. By clicking on this, it will expose the texture file that this refers to. And we could have skipped this whole step, but I just wanted to show you where it connects and what's actually happening here. It's basically pulling in a file that they've given it to us with this kind of purple and white look. And it's wrapping that around the character using the UV mapping and stuff that we're not gonna deal with. So if we mouse over, we can see the full name of the file and where that file is located. Torso SG base color. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to textures and search for torso SG. And there we go. So just a little bit of research to figure out which one we needed. It is this base color. This is the file that we want. Now, if you double click on that, you can see this is what the file looks like. It's a little complicated looking if you haven't done any texturing before, but what's happening is this big collection of stuff is being wrapped around the characters and assigned to different parts of that torso model. We can change the colors. We can add insignias and emblems and all kinds of cool stuff if we pull this into Photoshop. So how do we do that? Well, if you right click on the asset and go to asset actions, you can see an export button. I'm just gonna go ahead and put it in character, female, textures. I'm gonna make a new folder, call it edited, and I'm gonna save it. All right, so if I open that up in Photoshop, really what all we need to do is you can open up an adjustment layer and get the hue and saturation slider. You can just start sliding this thing around if you wanna just tweak the color. We could make it a nice light blue, we could up the saturation. You can, I'm gonna save it to a Targa format, basically what this is. And I'm just going to make a new one that says edited just so I have the clean one that I can go back to at any time and the new one. Now, in case you're not paying close enough attention to your entire desktop, once you do this and you come back into Unreal, if you put the files in the same folder that everything else already lives in, you're gonna see this pop up in the bottom right-hand corner of your screen. If you miss this and you don't do it, then you'll just have to manually import but it's just gonna notice that there's extra files suddenly showing up in the folder structure, and it's asking if you want to automatically import them in. So we're just gonna say yes. Now that we've done that, if we double click on our character, navigate back to the torso material section, go back to where we have the texture sample, we're gonna change this file from its current base color to the one that is dash edited, the one that we made. So by making that quick change, I'm gonna go ahead and hit save in the top left corner and it's gonna refresh all of this within Unreal, you're gonna see an automatic update to the character. So now her torso is this nice blue color. So one more time, go to the texture that we need, right click the base color, export from asset actions, open up that file. And this time what I'm gonna do is identify not only which pieces are what, because let's say we wanna put something on his chest and we need to know like what part in particular is this centerpiece right there. And rather than opening up the UVs, let's make it easier on ourselves. I'll also show you a really great Photoshop tip that you can use for a ton of stuff. I'm gonna make a new layer. We're gonna come over to the Paint Bucket tool, press and hold, and go to the Gradient tool. You can also use Shift-G to cycle through these if you're using hotkeys. In the top corner, they have a default you know, black to white gradient. You can click this for more options. I'm gonna do a rainbow. And I'm just gonna go right across the entire thing and make this nice rainbow gradient of all the colors. Now that completely covers everything. So the next thing, and this is the tip, is to click that layer with the rainbow, come up to where it says normal, these are the blending modes, and we're gonna go down to, in this case, multiply. You can try other things too if you want to, I don't know, just, I don't know, do something different. And this is gonna help me identify which parts of the rig are what. It's also gonna make a really cool effect. Save it also as a Targa dash edited. So one last time, I'm going to click the character asset. I'm gonna go to his mesh, and this one's not labeled quite as nicely, but it's element five. I'll double click it. And this one luckily just opens right to where we need to be. And it's this first one that goes into base color yet again. Change it to base color edited. It's gonna take a second, it's gonna update. I'm gonna go ahead and hit save. And you'll see automatically what has happened. So we can tell that the center plate is mostly green turning into a yellow. Our chest plate is somewhere within this range. There's the stomach area right there. This looks to be the piece that we want. 
right? I'll give it a slight bevel just to give it some texture and, and I'm just gonna save over the edited. There are my initials right on the chest. So I'll go ahead and hit save to the mesh, close this little interface and we're back to our regular game environment. That's how you can customize the look of the characters and you can get as crazy with it as you want or go simple, whatever. You have the tools, it's just a lot of that. Now two final things I'm gonna show you. One's super quick and one's much cooler. If you happen to have physics happening, for example, if you had dragged in the character physics asset instead, you would never know by looking at the two side by side. If you hit play, one of them has physics and is gonna to drop to the ground in a ragdoll, the other one's not. So if you're wondering why your character's collapsing on the ground, it's because you've added the physics asset. Now the last thing I wanna show you, we're currently just sitting in this kind of boring environment. There's not a lot going on. What you can do is you can hit Control N and you can go to VR Basic, for example. And now you've got an environment with some assets. You can go back to the Epic Games launcher, go to the Emerald Engine section, to the marketplace. And just where we had some animation for free, you can also hit free and you can browse through all kinds of stuff. You can pay for stuff if you want. A lot of stuff's really cheap, but there's plenty for free as well. For example, there's different effects that you can add in, like fire tornadoes and cool stuff like that. I already downloaded a bunch in my library, so it's up here. And when you wanna access these things, you just say add to project. It'll put it in your project and then you can import it into your scene by dragging it from the content browser. So for example, if I take Soul City, but when I say add to project, it's going to install this into my project. So I'll go back to the content area where we had character and now we have another folder called Soul City. Different folders, it's different things. We're gonna go to maps, Soul Slum. And I would recommend not picking Soul Slum for most of you guys because this is a really big file. I would go with some of the other worlds that are a lot smaller. The fantasy one's cool. The fire one is really cool. But this one seems to take a really long time. Man, I feel like at some point we should just do a video like reviewing. I feel like at some point, oh my gosh, there's lens flares. Look at this. Holy cow. Anyways, this is very cool. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this kind of crash course tour through the assets and through Unreal Engine, and thank you to NVIDIA for sponsoring this video and letting me be the person to share the contest with you guys. I hope you make something awesome. Please share it in the Discord. I would love to put it as part of that showcase. And if you guys aren't already following me on Twitch, I'm going to be doing a ton of new stuff on Twitch actively every week. The schedule's coming out, I think, next week of my schedule. So follow on Twitch for all the animation and visual effects goodness that is about to come. And I'll probably do some stuff with the game engines and with these Project Soul assets from NVIDIA on there as well. But as always, thank you guys for watching. Let me know what you guys think, and I can't wait to hear your thoughts. I'll see you in the next video.